Uh, thank you very much, Chairman. Um, can I say, first of all, I'm delighted to be here and to say that I'm the second member of my family who's been in this, this hallowed uh, venue. My brother Nilo Dodd spoke some years ago here. I remember, Brendan, a very interesting debate on peace in our country and the involvement and the importance of the American uh, influence on, on, that, on that issue. So I'm here today, just as you said, Chairman, that I have, I'm in two different departments. Just to briefly tell you what I actually do. Uh, I'm in the Department of the Environment, where I work with Minister Phil Hogan, who's the senior minister there. And I have specifically uh, working on this water policy and all aspects of it. So it's a very involved and a very detailed uh, involvement I have, as Minister Hogan has, in all aspects of the department. And secondly, uh, in the Department of Communications, where the senior minister there is Minister Pat Rabbit, uh, I'm dealing there with natural resources, with oil and gas, with issues like fracking, uh, and also with Inland Fisheries Ireland. So a very busy portfolio, and this indeed is a very, very important topic. Now, I know some of you here today. I, I don't know many of you. I see you for the first time, I'm sure, as you see me. So I have a speech here which the department prepared for me, but I'm, I'm happy to go off script and to answer any questions at any time, because I think the message I'm trying to get across here today, and I know it's the message that you, Chairman, I want everybody to understand, is exactly how we put water right at the very heart of our policy thinking, how it shapes the future of our country, how it deals with the needs of our communities as people live, how, how it deals with uh, water shortages in the future, and particularly the focus on employment and, and where we, think we see things going. Along with that, there's a parallel process, which as a politician, I think is, is incredibly important. And it's actually to sell to the people of this country the truth about water, why we have to charge for it, why it's so important that we do, how we can get our economy moving again by, by what we're doing. And I suppose uh, it's a political message which is based upon what's in our programme for government. Uh, and if I just read that to you, because this is what our, our policy is actually based on. Um, to achieve better quality water and environment, we will introduce a fair funding model to deliver clean and reliable water. We will first establish a new state-owned water utility company to take over responsibility for the separate local authorities for Ireland's water infrastructure and to drive new investment. The objective is to install water meters in every household in Ireland and move to a charging system that is based on use above the free allowance. So that's the task that we have. And as you can imagine, it's, 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 it's very challenging in many respects. And I suppose the report card would say that, that since we came into government, uh, we've done quite a lot. The first job I had to do was uh, to make sure that the entity called New Era was actually established. And we did, we did that in very quick time. And Eileen Fitzpatrick is now the chief executive of New Era. And shortly in, in the government uh, legislative program, we'll be introducing legislation to establish New Era on a statutory basis. And also dealing with Irish water, one of the first things we did was to make a definite decision, and I think this is important because a lot of people say to me, that the, the Irish water uh, industry as it is will remain in public ownership, that there's no question ever of the privatization of Irish water. So what we looked at were the possibilities of existing state agencies supplying <coughs> that service uh, to the public. And by a process uh, we interviewed uh, through, through the department uh, officials and other people, uh, Board Gash uh, and Board Namona competed for that project and based on, on recommendations, um, Borgash now are responsible or will be responsible. The legislation is coming in this week, the, the Water Services Bill, which will establish uh, Irish Water or Ishka Erin on, on a statutory basis. So I think that's, that's, that's terribly important because we'll now uh, be moving to a legal framework within which uh, Irish Water will be able to operate and will be able to uh, do the work uh, that, they, that has been set out for them to do. And I suppose the issue there is, <coughs> excuse me, one of the biggest issues, one of the biggest challenges is that presently in, in, in the water infrastructure in the public sector, I think we have something like over 4,000 people who are actually employed. There's over 4,000 people working uh, in the Irish water infrastructure throughout the country. 
when you think about it, that's, that's an awful lot of people with an awful lot of knowledge, with an awful, with an awful lot of corporate memory, with, with a lifetime commitment, as many of them have given, uh, to, to improving the water infrastructure. And I suppose uh, you spoke about engineers, and I have another brother who happens to be an engineer, and engineers always know everything, as we always know, and they're never, they're never, never wrong. Uh, and, and they never are, of course, but I think that one of the people that impresses me most is when I went down to uh, South Tipperary and I went up to look at a small water scheme up, up the top of a mountain, basically, and I met the caretaker who had worked for 20, 30 years working there. And his, he had a lifetime commitment to his work. Every day and every night, he, he, you know, he, he was on duty for his seven days or whatever. And I just want to express here in this forum uh, the, to acknowledge absolutely the commitment of all of those workers and particularly the caretakers and the plumbers and the general workers who in local government give a fantastic commitment. And I suppose the measure of that was I think about two, two Christmases ago uh, when we had uh, very serious problems because of a very, very cold winter around Christmas, you may or may not remember it, but in the south of Ireland, uh, in, in the south, we, we dealt with all of those. And we know that the, the water infrastructure, which, which was in, in Northern Ireland, actually effectively collapsed over that period of time, and the chief executive uh, uh, lost his position. So I, I just want to acknowledge absolutely the commitment, the dedication, uh, the tremendous work that is done in local authorities, and will continue to be done as well. And that's the second part of the message, that, that, that this is not... This is not uh, you know, something when, when it has legal and statutory basis. It's not just going to take over everything tomorrow and that's it. It's a process of change. It's so important that we get it right. And right at the very heart of that is working with local authorities. And I think that's a very important message to get out there. I think that uh, there will be service level agreements uh, which are in discussion between the department and local authorities right around the country. And those service level agreements uh, will give a continuing role to local authority workers involved in water infrastructure with a direct relationship uh, with, with Irish water. And that will obviously be phased out over a period of time. But clearly, uh, it is very important that this work is progressing and progressing well. And one of the benchmarks that there is in the process that has taken place, and this is due uh, in no small uh, respect to the input from the department and the county managers and the trade unions, is that, that we have a forum, should there ever be a dispute as to you know, procedures and how things should go ahead, that, that we have an independent chairman who will deal with any of those issues if and when they arise. So I want to reassure everybody here today that the progress we're making is real, it's tangible, it's, it's paced, it's, it's accountable, it's transparent, and it's also uh, taking on board and building on, I want to keep, this is very important, building on the tremendous work that is presently being done by all of those people I spoke about. So in what way will Irish water be different? Well, I suppose those of you that, were, that are in business, um, all you have to do is look at a recent report from the Department of the Environment in relation to the cost of water to industry. And you could look at two counties, if you look at Kildare and if you look at Wicklow. The cost per metre cube of water delivered in Kildare is half the cost of that delivered in Wicklow. Now, there are very good reasons for that because of the, the geography, the topography, the fact that you have disparate water supplies in Wicklow, whereas it's, it's entirely different in County Kildare. But what's very important is that industries in Kildare and Wicklow and everywhere else in this country, that there should be one charge, no matter where you are, for, for your water. And whatever house you live in, wherever that is, when you're paying for your water, then there should be uniform charge for everybody. So I think that's one of the things that the, that the um, Irish water will be able to give as one water body, that they will bring all of that into play. And clearly, I know the regulators may be here today, that, that they will have a very important job in dealing with that and ensuring that there's fairness and there's equity in the charges and so on. So it's, it's quite a big task that, that lies ahead. So we want to make sure that the certainty, and the other issue about the certainty for, for industry, and I make this point because Dublin City Council have had, a, 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 I want to say, a, a tremendous work done on examining the future of the water needs of the GDA, the Greater Dublin Area, and I'm sure most of you are familiar with that report and the concepts therein, that we have, I think that, I think the year is about 2020 or 2022, there or thereabouts, we will have in the Greater Dublin Area 
unless we can significantly augment the water supply, we will have a significant shortage of water that the, that the output of water uh, that, that, that can come through the existing water services uh, will be equal to the demand. And if, there's, if and when an, our economy does recover, we'll have to ensure that we have the capacity to deliver uh, more water to this region. And um, so what we're doing there, as I'm sure is familiar to, to a lot of people, is we're going to pump water with having got through uh, a due and accountable planning process uh, from uh, the River Shannon up to, up to the middle of, of the country, supplying disparate and other communities on the way. And in a place called Gary Hinch, and I'm very proud to have been there with Borden and I looked at the fantastic proposals that there are for the Gary, sorry, for the Gary Hinch Reservoir, which will be one of the biggest uh, water reservoirs. Uh, it'll be the biggest one in Ireland, one of the biggest, I think it's about 1,200 hectares of water, uh, which we will store um, uh, and then pump it forward in, into the city. And one of the big pluses for the Midlands in this proposal uh, and obviously, with, under the due planning process, and I want to say that, that, you know, that there is a ongoing consultation with communities in that area, and I've met with the people myself, and I'm very happy to continue to meet with them, because what we have to have is a partnership between everybody, is, is that we will have, in the Midlands, in Gary Hinch, we'll have one of the, well, we'll have a massive new water resource for the greater Dublin area and the adjoining counties. We'll also have one of the, one of, it'll be a fantastic recreation and amenity project for the Midlands. And um, I've been in the United Kingdom, and I've looked at uh, you know, such an equivalent type park, and in one of them that I went to in Anglia Water, uh, they have over a million visitors per annum to this massive water resource. And it's absolutely fantastic to see the hotels, to see the recreation and amenity that's there. So I, th so I think tied into this significant advance in meeting the water requirements of the Greater Dublin area will be a very significant improvement, obviously, in water and the towns on the way, and also will be a very important, uh, I think, a, a really centre, a national centre for recreation and amenity, which will not conflict uh, with, with the recreation and amenity that are presently enjoyed on the Shannon, and that's an issue uh, we'll be dealing with as well. Right, so you have Irish water, you have the relationship with the local authorities, uh, and then you have the actual structure of the company itself and its accountability. Now, we, we will be doing two, two pieces of legislation. The first bit here is, is going through the channel, I'm sure you're all familiar with it, is a pretty short bill. It's dealing with uh, setting up of the company itself. And at later stages then, uh, will be what the, you know, what the accountability of that company will be to the Eroctus. As a commercial semi-state, obviously, it will have to reserve to itself, you know, certain significant powers in terms of administration. But it will be, it will be subject uh, to directions, written directions from the minister of the day. So we will have to make sure that the company can deal with the, with the business issues, that it will be accountable to the Eroctus. The annual report will be laid before the Dáil. It will be accountable before Eroctus committees. And, one, and I'm addressing a wider audience that isn't here, obviously, right now, is that um, one of the big things about public representation is the, is the accountability of local government to elected representatives in the context of proposals in relation to water infrastructure. And what's going to be terribly important in relation to this is to get the very important balance right between future planning needs, in other words, a city, a town, a county, wants to develop in a particular way. Like, there has to be a proper relationship between national water policy and regional policy and how those towns, cities, or communities will develop so that you've joined up thinking between the demands, uh, the demands of planning, the planning process and the reality of what's available on the ground. So I think that, that, that's a very important issue there. And I think also is the accountability that if... If councillors, the much maligned group of people, as I'm sure you can imagine, uh, when, when they find that there is a problem with water infrastructure in their area, at the moment they ring the county engineer or the, the guy that's accountable and he will say, right, we'll, we'll get somebody there and we'll do this, that and the other. And we want to ensure that that accountability is there, not just to the elected representatives, which will have to be to, and I want to stress that point, that elected representatives will be able and will have full access uh, you know, to, to, to accountability locally, 
but also members of the public, that you, Johnny Murphy or Mary McGuire, whoever you are, that if you have a problem with water, that you will be, that the company will be accountable to you, that, uh, you know, that it won't be this, this amorphous mass somewhere in Dublin or Cork or wherever it ends up, but that, that they will be accountable to you. And, and that's very, very important, the relationship uh, uh, between Irish water and the consumer is absolutely critical. And I know that uh, plans are at an advanced stage uh, already for a, a, a call centre, which I think is expected to employ, um, I think, probably three to 400 people, uh, so, so that Irish water will be accountable to consumers, will be accountable uh, you know, to business or private enterprise and so on. So, that, so I think that's very important as well. And further to that too, I think that it's important that we have to get the relationship right, because water is such a critical issue and so important. We have to have the relationship right between the problems that will, will, that will arise and accountability uh, to the Eroctus. And I think you know, the committee system is, is, is very good at that, but I want to be happy, I want to be happy that it is entirely accountable you know, for, for major policy decisions, but at the same time is free to do and to go about its business in, 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 in the commercial world. Um, so I think that, that, that there are some of the issues uh, that I think are important. The other issue I think which is incredibly important, and I've spoken uh, to Borgash about this, is, is actually selling the message out there. Now, I haven't mentioned the EU IMF up to this moment in time, and I mention it in, in this respect. Clearly, these reforms are taking place at this time. Uh, the agreement that was signed with the previous government, this is an essential and absolutely critical part of it, that there has to be uh, charges for water. Now, and that is what has to happen, and that, that, that is what we have to do. But I think that, what, what's, well, no doubt that, is, that has to happen, but uh, to have to carry out these reforms anyway, I believe, is essential. You know, we need to do this anyway. We need to do this to protect the environment. We need to do this to ensure that, that the future industrial needs of the greater Dublin area and everywhere else are met. We need to have this reform there. We need to have the changes. We need to have new synergies. We need to, we need to make it more efficient and more effective in terms of our overall costings. The facts are that 1.2 billion is what we spend on our water infrastructure every year, 1.2 billion. What we actually take in in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, charges at the moment is somewhere around 200 million. Now that's a massive gap that has to be met. And clearly uh, the company Irish Water, uh, as and when uh, the charging system changes, it will have to be fair, it will have to be equitable, it will have to be seen to be fair to everybody. I think that's a core part of what we're doing. And there has to be transparency about the charging. There has to be accountability in the Eroctus to that. And I know that the CER, who will be the regulator, they are already accountable uh, to the Eroctus anyway. But I think as we go into this uh, uh, over the next couple of years, you know, the message from me is, is that we have to understand, you know, what the problems are for people out there. We have to meet their needs, but we have to sell the message. Now, one of the most important things to me is the question of education information, getting it out there. And I have referred a number of times to the actual um, program in the past in relation to Race Against Waste, which was so successfully managed uh, by the Department of the Environment. And we are going to have a like program uh, in terms of public information and knowledge so that people, no matter where they are in this country, will understand why it's happening, why, why it is good for all of us that it does, and, 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 and that it seems, you know, that it makes sense to everybody that they can buy into this in these very difficult times. And I spoke to a, um, a teacher, you know these education teacher centres? I was speaking there some months ago to uh, the head of the teacher uh, centre in, in Black Rock, and I said, you know, I said, we really need to address this issue holistically in a much deeper way. And he said to me, you know, what we should be doing and what we'll have to look at is in our primary schools, if I'm going on too long, just stop me, Chairman, if, if uh, you know, I, 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 I'll probably go on to my hobby horse, as they say. But uh, it, what's very important is that 
is that children and young people uh, get the message now because of all, uh, it's very hard to get changed in any society, but um, as in the race against waste, as in things like separate and different, like smoking and all of those, when you sell the message to young people, when they understand it and believe it, and it's real and it's true and it's not dressed up in anything that isn't factual and correct, then you win the battle. And the battle here is for the hearts and minds, I believe, of, of, of the people of this country. This is what we have to sell them. They have to buy into it. They have to understand it. We have to explain it. And I think one of the key ways for me, and I haven't progressed this any further than just talking to that uh, gentleman, was we need a proper uh, water policy in our education system as well. We need to get the message out there. And obviously, it'll be holistic. It can go into all of the issues that you raised here about climate change and so on. Um, but I think that's a core part of how we have to change. And uh, that's something that, that I'm committed to as well. Um, so I think, I think the question then, um, you know, that the accountability, cost effectiveness, cost effectiveness and efficiency are very important. You spoke, Chairman, about the cost of the, the barrel of, 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 uh, of water. I think, what was it, 85 dollars? Euro. 85 euros, sorry, excuse me, 85 euros, yeah. Okay, well, I mean, uh, the cost of water that we supply, I think we worked it out per meter cubed on average is about what? It's about uh, 252 on average is what we charge for water. And you wouldn't get one bottle of Ballygowan for that in a, in, a, in a pub in Dublin, would you? So, so we, we're given very, very good value for money there. But, but I, 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 I think what we need to see is the waste of water in our society. I know probably people here from local government. Um, I think the figure nationally of what we call unaccounted for water, that is water uh, that we treat, that we pump, that we store, that we put into pipes, and it goes absolutely nowhere into the ground, unaccounted for, is over 44%. That's a massive, uh, that's a massive amount of investment that is absolutely wasted. And hand in hand with the process of, of, of water metering which is coming in, must be and will be accountability in reducing uh, that wastage of water. Now there's a table of counties, I won't go into them all, you can look them up yourself. Uh, some of them are as high as over, some of them are higher than 60%. Some counties in this country, the amount of unaccountable water is over 60%. Now Dublin is very, very good in terms of the national figure. I think we're under 23, 24%. And if, uh, it's still an awful lot of water wasted, but it's, uh, on, on, international, uh, on international averages, it's, it's, it's not bad. But, uh, so we really have to tackle that. And for the consumer out there who's going to pay for this water, they're entitled to know and to ask, what are you doing about the waste? When is it going to stop? How are we going to do that? And that's part of the buy-in to the process, is that the investment program the investment program, which I think we believe should be somewhere around 600 million per annum is the figure that we have. Uh, that's what we should be putting into our water infrastructure. Uh, that's what it's for. That's what it's for. It's to make it better. It's to, you know, it's, it's to do a proper job. And those of you that have traveled, as I'm sure you all have, when you go to places, um, you know, when you, when you go to places like Korea, right, what's, I know it's a different country, obviously. South Korea, one account for water, something like three or four percent. It's unbelievable. And that's real. Of course, they went in and they rebored all the piping and did all of that. Uh, so, like, you know, we've got a big task here. We've got to sell it. And I think if we sell it right, if we get the messages right, people will buy into it and they will pay for it. They will pay for it if they believe it's fair and if it's accountable. Um, so, I think that, um, so I think the other point is, and I'll probably stop now if I've, um, I'm happy to take. take questions or whatever way. Um, one, of the other, one of the other big issues uh, is, 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 you know, basically wh when you say that, that, you know, that, that the charges, when we fix the water, will our costs go down? Well, it will mean if we reduce overall, uh, if we reduce the wastage, it means then that we don't have to build as much new bits of infrastructure maybe down the road. It means that, you know, we can go further with less. Uh, because we're using every single drop. I think in Singapore the policy is every drop, use every single drop. That's what we should be doing. And I think one of the positive things about metering, and there's a lot of people who, who, who would be very critical of it, 
But when you talk to people from group water schemes right around the country, and there's an example, I think, is in the Cavan Monaghan area, I can chapter and verse, we can get you. But when they introduced water metering in their rural community, now I want to stress, obviously, it was agriculture use as well, they reduced overall consumption in excess of 70%, in excess of 70%. Now, I think the figure that I get from people that I talk to in terms of urban areas, that, that people will be able to reduce their use of water. Um, you know, obviously for economic reasons, but also for conservation reasons, by at least 10 to 15 percent. So there's big pluses in our society as, 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 as we go down this route. So, um, so I'm, happy to, I'm happy to take any questions. I just want to say finally that I'm very privileged to be here. It's a major task we in government have in hand. And I think by dealing with it in a fair, accountable, transparent way, uh, the issues um, about water and water infrastructure uh, will be dealt with fairly, openly, transparently and accountably. And I believe that Irish Water, um, and I want to congratulate uh, Bogas for their excellent uh, involvement, commitment and, and absolute professionalism in all of this. I think that they are the right and proper vehicle to do that. I believe that, that Borgash, which is the, the, the major, the board as we call it in legislation, it has a very, very, very fantastic record really in relation to working uh, with, with ordinary people, fixing issues, being accountable, being available. And I think that's very important for us. So um, I suppose the last thing I'd say before I sit down is that um, I was in Toronto there some time ago and we were looking at uh, water infrastructure and issues over there. And we're sitting in this, this room talking around the table and um, we were saying, well, I said, well, what's it like in Ireland anyway? And uh, you know, what, 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 what's your domestic charge for water? And we said, we don't have any. And they laughed. And then they said, you know, what, uh, you know what, what, what's your household charge? And I said, we didn't have any either. And I suppose at the heart of all of this in our country is that for so long, <laughs> for so long, we, 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 we didn't face the truth. And the truth is, the truth is to have a sustainable modern economy to, to have a real country that has sustainable base in tax and income. Uh, notwithstanding the pain that there is there for people to do it, we have to have household charges and we have to have, uh, we, we have, to have charges for water. Now, wh what that means then is that you have a sustained income you know, for essential activities in our economy that will be there and that we won't be relying as we did for so long and so many years in the past, which almost destroyed our country, brought us to the brink uh, of ruin, you know, on, on a housing boom that ended in, in the bubble that, that, that burst so badly and so difficult for so many of our citizens. So thank you very much for listening to me. I'd be happy to take any questions. Thank you.